No, now, now we're fixing it. Excelente. Excelente. Just take a few seconds and the sound will be coming back. Anyways, we kindly ask the large audience to walk around to have sure that everybody has a seat to be comfortable, <laughs> especially tonight and tomorrow. Anyways, let's continue. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for those watching live that there is the sound and the sound has been fixed. Excellent. So let's continue. This is a ta'anit of happiness. Even if you follow the added prayers that we said today in the Tahanunim, how many verses it has from the Hallel? Many, which is not the norm when it comes to a regular fast day additional prayers. Additionally, the Lacha writes that this was the day, as I mentioned in the past, that the Jewish people waged the war against Amalek. And comes the Kava Yashar, and it says, and those watching and listening and hear the live audience try to do this today, even as soon as you finish today's class. So the Kava Yashar says, a person who requires heavenly assistance for any matter of their life. And let's be honest, if you're a human, you have needs. Different people, different needs. Some people need to get married. Some people want to have children. Some people want the children to get married. Some people may need refuah shirema. Some people require parnasa. Some people require shalom. Whatever need you have, it says, take a few moments today and recite chapter 22 of Tehillim. This is the chapter of Purim. Lam naseya halayele tashahar mizmor le David. The Gemara writes, Ayele tashahar represents Esther Hamalka. And she prays to the Almighty for salvation. When did she say this chapter of Tehillim three times? When did she say this chapter of Tehillim? Remember the Megillat Esther says, Mordechai says to Esther, go and see the king. And Esther says, but I was not asked to see the king already for 30 days. And what was the ruling in Shushan? That a person that appears to see the king uninvited, the king had the power to execution the person. God forbid, this was the level of strictness that they had. And what Esther says, I'm going to go and I'm going to beseech in behalf of the Jewish people because abadati, abadati. God forbid if a Hashberosh is willing to execute me because I came unannounced, I'm willing to take the risk in order to protect and hopefully get the salvation for Am Israel. So what the Kava Yashar says, like Esther Malka, by reciting this chapter, she was able to reverse the animosity of Ahasuerus in the beginning and slowly it changed into kindness that a person can also take the heavenly judgment and reverse it into kindness. Not only that, it says, open your heart and say in the merit of Mordechai and Esther, like the Almighty opened the gates of heaven and provided the salvation for the Jewish people, may Hashem also open the gates of heaven for my personal salvation. That is the reason why you should light, you should light, I already did it earlier today, yes, two candles, one in memory of Esther and one in memory of Mordechai, and give charity in honor of Mordechai and Esther. And interesting enough, if you look at the name of Esther and Mordechai, what do we have? The letter Aleph of Esther, the letter Mem of Mordechai, which interesting enough is the same letters as Aharon and Moshe. Aharon, Aleph, Mem, Moshe. You have the same letters as Eliyahu and Navi and Mashiach. So you have Aharon, Moshe, Esther, Mordechai, Eliyahu, Mashiach. Which Eliyahu and Navi, by the way, is hinted in the Megillah. 
when the pasuk says that Harbona, Harbona was one of the of the ministers of Ahasuerus, and what does he say to Ahasuerus towards the second half of the Megillah? By the way, Haman built a tree, Gavoa Hamishim Amma, Yani, and I'm like 75 feet tall, give or take. What more the Haman Ahasuerus says? Teluhu Alav, hang. A man on that tree. But look at this fascinating prayer that God willing we are going to say uh, tonight. That when you say the you say Arur Haman Baruch Mordechai, and then you say Begam Harbona Zahur Letov. May Harbona be remembered for good. Harbona was a Gentile. So what is he doing now? When we are blessing, so our rabbis tell us that this harbona was Eliyahu and Navi. You know when you say Eliyahu and Navi, Zahur Letov? How many sadikim of our prayers we say Zahur Letov? Only one. Eliyahu and Navi, Zahur Letov. So when we say Begam Harbona, Zahur Letov, this is a hint about Eliyahu and Navi. And that's what we say, Aleph of Eliyahu, Mem Mashiach. Because in a, in, a, in, a, in a way, the miracle of Purim, it was like Mashiach's arrival, with one difference. Mashiach's arrival is for the entire world, and the miracle of Purim was only for the Jewish people. I can add one more. Aleph Mem. Eliyahu Mansur. <laughs> Rabbi, I hope you like it. I know Rico is going to tell the Rabbi. The Rabbi spoke about you in the class. Talking about Rabbi Mansur, my dear friend. Uh, yesterday, we shared with our audience an interesting Gemara that the rabbi quoted many years back talking about protection for plagues. Plague is regretfully what's going on today. This coronavirus from a, a medical perspective, it's called a plague. A plague means something, something that goes viral. But today, usually the word viral is connected to WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook. It went viral. Now, regretfully, the word viral comes from the word vi virus, by the way. Okay? So now this condition is going viral. Literally. Somebody called me up yesterday asking if uh, they should come to the synagogue to listen to the Megillah. Good question. So the first thing I asked the person was, uh, what, are you affected by the coronavirus? That was the first question that we asked. No, has shalom. So what prompts your question? So the fellow is telling me that uh, regretfully he had a medical condition and uh, a lung needed to be removed. So once one lung is removed, that person is considered hole sheyesh bo sakana, a person with a medical condition that his life is in danger. So a fellow like him, he cannot come to the synagogue in the night of Purim or the day of Purim, especially when there is a lot of people. He can come to the private one, but the ruling is stay home. This was the ruling given even yesterday there was a, 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 a rabbinical and doctor's meetings to discuss the parameters of the conditions, etc. So going back to today's Ta'anit. So as I said, Ta'anit of Esther is the Ta'anit of Simha. And that's why the Sefer Yashar says, Kava Yashar says, take care of it, do the prayer, and by Ezat Hashem, the salvation will come to the person. So Rabbi Mansur mentioned yesterday a very interesting Gemara that discusses the different gifts that Moshe Rabbeinu received when he came up to receive the Torah. 
And the Pasuk tells us concerning Moshe Rabbeinu, and it says, Natata Matanot Ba'adam, gives, was given to mankind. Who is this Pasuk referring to? The Gemara in Shabbat tells us that different Malachim, after they agreed that the Torah needed to be given to humans, that the Torah was not given or created to stay in the Shamaim, but actually to be given to humans, even the Yeser Ara gave Moshe Rabbeinu a gift. What was the gift? The Yeser Ara says to Moshe Rabbeinu, every time there is a plague, recite the Ketoret. Do the Ketoret, and the presence of the Ketoret will reverse the decree. The Ketoret is something that regretfully today we do not have in a physical way. The Ketoret was the mixture of 11 types of spices that the Kohen Gadol will do in the Beta Mikdash on a regular basis. But today we do not have it as an offering, but we have it as prayer. In the beginning of Tefillah, at the end of the Tefillah, before Minha, this is what we say, Be'ahad asar samanim ha'yuba be'eluhen, ha'sori be'asiporem be'ahelvena. You're familiar with this prayer? So the Gemara in Shabbat says, recite the Ketoret, and the recitation of the Ketoret reverses plagues. This is one concept. What other misvah from the Torah has this powerful effect that is able to nullify plagues. And the reason I'm using the word plague, not because of the coronavirus, because that is the pasuk from the Torah. You know which mitzvah I'm referring to? Mahasit hashekel. Before Purim, many people already are giving it from Rosh Chodesh, Many people are giving it now in the day of Ta'anit, and many people will give it today before Megillah reading. We have the Mahasita Shekel. The Alakha writes, since today we do not have the Beta Mikdash, but we're doing it symbolically, when you give this amount, you should say, Zecher le Mahasit Hashekel, a reminder of the commandment of the Torah to give half a shekel, and this commandment from the Torah was active during the time of the Beta Mikdash, and throughout the entire month of Adar, every time a person came to the Beta Mikdash, needed to pay his Mahasita Shekel. Look at the Mahasita Shekel as a membership fee. What was the purpose of the Mahasita Shekel? Short answer, to support and to sponsor the communal sacrifices that were offered twice daily, every Shabbat, every Yom Tov, every Rosh Chodesh. So you want to be part of that offering because you want to receive all the benefits. It's like you want your insurance policy to cover a claim. But will they cover you if your policy is expired? Or if your policy was not paid? Obviously not. This is Mahasita Shekel. Mahasita Shekel was to bring a participation in the communal offering. But listen to what the Pasuk tells us in the Mizvah of Mahasita Shekel, which actually will be this week's Torah portion, Perasha Kitisa. This Shabbat, again, we take out two sefers. First, Perasha Kitisa. Second, Perasha, Perashat Para. The loss of the red heifer, and the reason why we're going to read this parasha on Shabbat is to serve as a reminder to purify ourselves prior to the offering of the Korban Pesach. And the Pasuk says, Belo hiye bahem negev. The Torah says, By the zechut of giving the Mahasita Shekel, the plague will not affect you. Which plague is the Torah talking about? The plague of counting people. Counting people is something that you should not do. And that's why you gave the half a shekel. So I counted how many half shekels I collected, and that will tell me how many people donated. 
And that's why the Pasuk says, He ashir lo yarbe. You are a wealthy guy. You want to give $50 for Mahasita Shekel. What do we tell you? No. You can only give $6. That's the value of the market in America today. For those watching or listening, this is how we earmark the value of Mahasita Shekel based on the currency a cost of the silver, 9 to 10 grams. We'll need the number to be more round and easier. So it's $6 per person who okay but when I printed the silver was good so I don't take the valuation anyways it's not doesn't doesn't has to do with the currency of the city you have to give it here but, uh, but what I'm gonna do with the shekel okay so then now you're making me work first of all we're recording this live thank you mercy First of all, I have to, of course, we're going to take the shekel. Of course, we're going to take. But the mitzvah, the mitzvah is to give on the place that where you're at. Now, the six, she- six American dollars, it will be like 20 shekelim in Israel, give or take. Okay? But it doesn't matter. The mitzvah is to give. Now, ideally, this should be given for husband and wife and sons and daughters over the age of bar and bat mitzvah. But if a person is able to afford, the halakha says, irrelevant of a play going around, you should still do it for your children. Why, the halakha says, because it brings added protection to our children. Unbelievable. And this is the guarantee from the Torah. So believe me, if there is a moment that we need to go the extra mile, which $6 per person is not going to break us, has shalom. and if it does, let me know, because you need help. I hope nobody's in that position. But definitely, definitely, the lacha encourages it, especially this year, to give for our children, because this is better than health insurance. I'm not telling you one not second, to... Two, one second. Two, 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 two. Okay, wait, wait, can you... Mehila, can you explain to him the procedure? No, 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 the procedure of the recording. Mehila, I apologize in advice in advance. Thank you. I forgive you. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. It's a pudding joke. Not the forgiveness. The forgiveness is a myth. The previous comment. So he's asking the following question. What about if your child is 50 years old? Do you need to give for him or not? I'll give you the short answer. I hope that your son does give his own mahasita shekel. If he gives his own mahasita shekel, hazaku baruch. But if you believe that he's not going to give, believe me, do it. It does bring some type of benefit to the person directly or indirectly. So tonight, God willing, we are going to come to the synagogue to listen to the Megillah. Every person must listen to the Megillah. Why? Short answer, the Gemara says, because at the end of the day, the threat of Haman wasn't against the men or the women or the children. The threat of Haman was against every single Jew. Irrelevant of the age, irrelevant of their gender. But the Lacha also says, don't bring babies or children that are going to disturb the reading to the synagogue. Why not? Even though it's beautiful, bring them to the kids' program. This way, they are able to be entertained for the 40 or 45 minutes that the Megillah takes place, and the parents and the adults will be able to follow the reading of the Megillah properly. And the, this mitzvah, even though it has a time frame, Ladies are also obligated to come and listen to the Megillah because the miracle of Purim also saved the lady's life. For the benefit of the Kahal, we are doing what many synagogues are doing, offering an extra reading late at night, like around 9 o'clock. So this way the husbands can finish praying, finish Megillah, go home, and then the wife is able to come. Tomorrow, look at the schedule. We're going to have plenty of reading Three minyanim plus three additional reading, 10.30, 12.30, and 4.30. So no one can say, I did not find a minyan 
for the reading of the Megillah. Matanot la evyonim an mishloach manot. Many of these mitzvot that we're doing in Purim is to enhance and to create unity and harmony, etc. So therefore, these are the parameters. Matanot la evyonim, you need to give the value of a se'uda to two needy people. How much do we assess the value of a se'uda? I will say a sandwich and a bottle of water. That is more or less a meal. That costs $10. So if you have to give to two needy people, you need to give, you need to give $20 and your wife needs to give $20. The wonderful volunteers of Ikur Holim are collecting and tomorrow we have a line of people coming and to collect envelopes and checks the way we do Baruch Hashem every year. Additionally, you have Mishloach Manot. Basically, we give a basket that contains two different food items and we give it to our friends, to our relatives, etc. And the whole idea of this particular mitzvah is to increase the unity and harmony among people. Imagine yourself, somebody gives you a Mishloach Manot basket, how are you going to feel? Very happy. And hopefully you will reciprocate. So that happiness enhances unity and harmony amongst the Jewish people, which is one of the main messages of Megillat Esther. Now, someone asked if you are allowed to give Matanot Levyonim and Mahasita Shekel from money of Maaser. So I'll give you a couple of uh, explanations. Number one, all mandatory requirements when it comes to mitzvah cannot be taken away from ma'aser because the mitzvah of giving matanot levyonim and mahasita shekel etc is a requirement that you must fulfill but let's say that what was the minimum amount for matanot levyonim i mentioned before ten dollars times two that's twenty dollars you gotta give twenty dollars for you $20 for your wife. How much is that? 40 So the short answer will be, the first $40 cannot be from the ma'aser. They need to be from your wallet. But let's say, instead of giving $40, you want to give $200. So the $160 can be deducted from ma'aser. Why? Because halachically, your minimum required amount was $20. That's why the Lacha says it is better to increase in Matanot Levionim than in the Mishloach Manot. Why? Because the heart of the needy look up for the holiday of Purim and look out for the holiday of Pesach. Obviously, there are people that need help every holiday, but in the day of Purim, the generosity of the Jewish people is unbelievable to the point that the Lacha says, yat not nimlo, which means a person that comes to you in Purim and asks you for money, you give. You don't ask questions. You don't ask questions. And this is a great benefit for us because our rabbis tell us that this concept of extending our hand and we give him is also for us. That our rabbis tell us, Kol a person that comes to God in the day of Purim, besides now Ta'anit Esther, tomorrow, and the Pasuk says, Ketov Leva Melech, the king tomorrow is in a good spirit. This refers to Akadosh Baruch Hu. So we say, Kol a a person calls out to God, not Nimlo, God will answer the prayer. So like today is a powerful day of prayer, tomorrow is an even greater day of prayer because the spirit of the king is in a very happy mode. So he's asking a question, is it okay to listen and watch it live? Short answer is no. The only exception to this statement is someone that is quarantined or someone that is under medical observation, or a person that is with severe con medical condition, only then you can watch it live, which I believe in Israel that they have thousands 
of people in quarantine, I think they will be registered to watch it live. And perhaps I believe that uh, some synagogues in Brooklyn or in New York City, okay, uh, are basically offering this to avoid the presence of masses, etc. But this is what is called in Jewish law, Hora'at Sha'a. Hora'at Sha'a means that because of these unfortunate circumstances, then I'm telling you, stay home for Perashat Zachor. And I'm telling you, stay home for Megillat Esther. When did you ever hear a rabbi that says, stay home for Zachor, stay home for Megillat Esther? But we have a rule. When it comes to matters of health, the halacha moves to the side. In Miami, although there are a couple of cases in Broward County, but uh, we're not in that level to offer to the audience a live uh, video feed of the reading of the uh, Megillah. And the reason why halachically is not valid because the Megillah needs to be live. And even though we are live, but because of technology, there is a delay in the sound, in the delivery of the sound, so that makes the Megillah not being live, alive, like you are physically alive, that you have instant delivery. Now, the question that came up concerning that in the day of Purim, we, go, we give without asking. Shouldn't you give every time someone asks? The short answer is no. No. As a person that gives charity, you need to make sure that your charity is kosher. What does that mean kosher? It goes to the proper needy. One of the things that Irmiyah Navi says to the Almighty, send the people unworthy recipients of charity. So the mitzvah does not count. On a regular basis, so if you're going to give a dollar, you're not entitled to ask any question. You give him a dollar, ma'asalame. It's going to take you longer to ask, what do you need? And you're not going to give him $150. Okay, i give you another dollar. You're embarrassing the person, you're embarrassing yourself. Basically, sure, people ask you, you're going to give a dollar, but if they know, can you give me a thousand? Can you give me 500? Can you give me 101? It's your obligation as a Jew to make sure that what you're giving is legit. And that's the reason why those who come to collect, we do the minimum research that they come with a certificate that the organization of charity already did some of the legwork to tell us what is it for, etc. Now, uh, in Purim is different. In Purim, whoever asks, we give. It doesn't mean that everybody that is asking you, you must give $20 every person. No, the mitzvah of 20 is two people. But Baruch Hashem, the Jewish people are very generous. And Baruch Hashem, people give. You know, somebody came last night and he says, Rabbi, I want you to give a gift to every student of the Kolel. Very nice. Four digits. Beautiful. Okay? You have 14, 12 in the Kolel, you do the numbers. Why? Because there is a great zechut in the day of Purim in supporting Torah students. There's a great zechut of your charity is supporting the learning of the Torah. That buys life and that buys protection, not only for the giver, not only for the recipient, but everyone else. So it's a great, great, great merit, and the person wants me to keep it uh, anonymous. So by Ezat Hashem, uh, God willing, I'm working on this, uh, ready to prepare all the envelopes between today and tonight, so tomorrow morning we distribute them in the most appropriate way. One of the things that we also do in the day of Purim is the concept of Se'udat Purim. Se'udat Purim is done in commemoration of how the salvation came to the Jewish people through the meal. If you remember in the Megillah Tester, the Megillah begins with a Mishteh. 
The Megillah begins with a feast, a banquet that Ahasuerosh made. But if you remember when we started to learn the Megillah uh, messages, that celebration of Ahasuerosh was an insult to the Jewish people, was an insult to our Hachamim, was an insult to God, the way Ahasuerosh portrayed himself. So we see that the food and the banquet brought near destruction to Am Israel. But if you fast forward towards the Megillah, where the plot of Haman was revealed publicly to Ahasuerosh in the Mishteh, in the feast that Esther made. And that's why the Megillah Esther says, Yeme Mishteh Besimha, days of celebration, a banquet, drinking, Mishteh means drinking, and joy. How much you need to drink? The Gemara writes, Hayaminish Levasum Vafuria. A person must drink more in Purim than any other day. But if God forbid a person has a medical condition, a person has a health condition, a person, God forbid, has an addiction, or God forbid a million times a person is going to be driving in Purim, that is dangerous, that is forbidden. So my suggestion is don't drink and drive or you should have an Uber or a designated driver and don't say, I can handle it, I'm big enough, I'm old enough. None of that, God forbid, God forbid, can save the person's life in the moment of danger or the moment that the brain of the person is impaired. So this is also, again, Hamira Sakanta. Even though the Devisa Mitzvah to drink, and when the Talmud wrote this, it wasn't like the way it is today. You take your car, probably people walk from one house to the other in the village or town that they live. Now you're going to see your parents, your in-laws, your rabbi, your friends, your relatives, your kids, teachers, your classmates. So then Purim becomes like driving, driving, especially for the parents and mothers for of the young children that they want to celebrate in the most beautiful way, which we definitely encourage. But the Lacha again says, don't be a Hasid Shote. Don't be a pious fool. You're going to drink, you're going to drink just to fulfill a suggestion. And with that, you're going to put your life in danger or you're going to put other people's in danger. So be careful tomorrow. Make sure that Purim remains a good and a happy uh, occasion and not, God forbid, God forbid, a day of danger and a day of tragedy. Regretfully, I will tell you one thing. Statistically, the busiest day for Hatzalah in the calendar is Purim. It's not Yom Kippur. It's not Yom Kippur that you can understand. Maybe people not feeling well, people fasting, fainting. Not at all. The worst day for Hatzalah is the day of Purim. And especially drinking, adults and teenagers. The Sa'uda of Purim should constitute a Sa'uda, bread, meat, and wine. You can have fish also, because the mazal of Adar is dagim, but definitely meat, bread, and wine. It's like a mini. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Is a mini Se'udat Yom Tov. This is what the celebration of Purim is that usually people do with families and friends, etc. And you need to be also careful with this matter that the Se'udat of Purim, we should not miss the topic of prayer. Because you cannot pray under the influence of alcohol. You need to wait till you come down and then continue praying and then saying the tefillah. Not only that, how do you determine if a person is capable of praying or not? See how they talk. If they are able to talk in a coherent, coherent manner, so that's okay. But if you see the person is slurring the speech 
and he's saying a lot of nonsense, that's a sign that he cannot pray. And if he prays, the tefillah, it goes straight to the recital in Bin. It's called tefillato to'eva. Now, and that's why you need to be careful when it comes to the prayer concept and the birkat amazon and the arvit and everything else that is required to do tefillah. Now, the question is, if a person must drink specifically wine or a person can drink other alcoholic beverages from the Rambam in the laws of Purim and others say that wine is the ideal but in the olden days I don't believe that they had so much variety like we have today but also the Lacha says since the miracle the Pasuk says the Pasuk specifically mentions about wine wine seems to be the opening drink for the Sauda of Purim. Then you're going to have beer. Somebody asked me yesterday if they should have Corona beer for a Sauda Purim. I said, of course, have a Corona beer and have the Kavana that in the Zehud of drinking the Corona beer in the Sauda of Purim, may Hashem remove the danger of the beer, of the, of the Corona virus into the salvation of Am, uh, Israel and mankind as well. Also, ladies need to be careful with this particular halakha, meaning to say, even though that the Gemara and the halakha seems to encourage a bit of drinking tomorrow more than usual to, ex to enhance a bit the happiness, but the halakha also says that ladies, because of modesty and senior reasons, they should definitely avoid drinking a lot, but definitely they can drink a bit in order to enhance the celebration of the uh, holiday. Now, ladies also, the Lacha writes, they need to do the Sauda, like they need to give Mahasita Shekel, they need to give Matanot Levionim and Mishlo Ahmanot, and even children should be trained for this particular Sauda Mizvah as well. But the Lacha writes that children should not be drinking any type of alcohol. And also the Alakha writes that children should be given gifts and sweets in honor of the day of Purim. We add the prayer Al Nisim in the evening prayer of tonight as well as Shaharit, Minha and the Birkat Amazon. Alakha also says in honor of Purim. Ba'im Bebikte Yom Tov. Purim is not a weekday. Yes, it's a weekday for driving, but Purim is a Yom Tov. And therefore the Lacha says, when you come to pray to the synagogue tonight, come dressed like the holiday. I have my Shabbat suit ready for tonight. I have a few, so I'm going to rotate a bit. All right? And the Lacha discusses going to work. Needless to say that Ideally will be that a person does not go to work in the day of Purim. But the custom is that after the person fulfill all of the relevant misvot of Purim and they need to go to work, they can allow to go to work, but make sure that all of the misvot are there and the Lacha writes that a person uh, needs to take care of their parnasa, but also understand that is permissible, and the Lacha does conclude that is permissible, especially if the, this not doing it may cause the person to experience a financial loss. But as I said before, come to the morning prayers, do your tefillah, listen to the Megillah, do the Mahasita Shekel, if you have not done it till tonight, do Matanot Levionim, do the Mishloah Manot, and go to work. In the afternoon, so this way if you drink you can rest a bit, come home earlier and do the sauda, unless you follow the Kabbalistic suggestion to do the sauda in the morning. According to the Mekubalim, many opinions say to do sauda in the morning, but our tradition is to do the sauda after Hasot, etc. The Lacha writes 
uh, concerning taking a haircut, it seems to be acceptable, but better occupy yourself with the misvot of Purim and then take a haircut the day after, etc. Now, Tahposet, wearing a mask or wearing a costume, the Lacha says, when Purim, like I mentioned yesterday, all the days, all the all the holidays are are camouflaged into the holiday of uh, Purim. I'd like to finish with the following uh, concept: time allowing tomorrow, we may have a class. I don't promise. We're gonna have a lot of minyanim. I'm reading myself the Megillah twice at least tomorrow besides the other Hazanim, etc. So I'm not guaranteeing that tomorrow we'll be having a class. But allow me to say the following. The Hida HaKadosh writes and it says that from Purim till Pesach, we have exactly 30 days. That's why the Lachal says, Shualim Bedoshim Shiloshim Yom. 30 days before the holidays, we start reviewing the laws of Pesach. So technically, from Purim Day, from tomorrow, we need to start reviewing the laws of Pesach. The laws of Pe Pesach are plenty. The laws of Pesach are many. So therefore, from tomorrow, we start reviewing the laws of the holiday of Pesach. Now, the Hidan HaKadosh says, Purim, is a miracle of salvation. Pesach is a miracle of salvation, meaning to say that in 30 days we have two miracles of salvation. You know what the Hidah says? That a person in the next 30 days in the Amidah, especially in the Beracha of Hashivenu Avinu Letoratecha, which is a prayer for Teshuvah, you should have in mind, you don't have to say the person's name, but have in mind anyone that can use a boost to do Teshuvah. Yeah. If he's a son, a relative, a friend, whoever it may be, and I think that if you think, we all know people who can definitely use a spiritual uh, boost in their life. So the Hidah Kadosh says, pray in these 30 consecutive days, and you don't need to talk to the person at all. Just pray for them and the zechut of the celebration of Purim and the zechut of the celebration of Pesach, God will handpick selected neshamot to come back. You know, somebody told me a story yesterday that he went to Israel in order to be volunteer in the army for three months from America. And then he wanted to go to Thailand and the Far East to meditate, to go to the Tibet, to go there to the monks, whatever that means, and something happened, he couldn't fly. So what did he do? He went to Yeshiva instead. And he found meditation and Torah learning in Yeshiva. You follow me? We don't have to go that far to get close to Kadosh Baruch Hu. The Beracha is next to us. We just need to take advantage of what we have. We'd like to take the opportunity to wish everyone individually and collectively a Purim Sameach. Remember to fulfill all of the misvod relevant to the celebration of Purim. 
אבל פולפיל הפונו זה פסוק דצס, ליהודים הייתה אורה ושמחה וששון מכר, the Jewish people had light, gladness, joy and happiness, אבל בעזרת השם, may all these challenges of health that are going around the world, בעזרת השם, like the מגילת אסתר, the tragedy was reversed into salvation, may also these challenging moments for mankind should be reversed for health, and the ultimate blessing that we all pray for every day of our life, the imminent arrival of Mashiach Sidkenu, Amen. 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 Amen.